Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Christy Van with Fantastic Finances and on this channel I usually teach Velocity Banking but today I have the one and only Chris Noggle in the room with me. Not really, not really, but he is with me and we want to talk about infinite banking. I get so many questions when it comes to what is infinite banking and how is it going to serve me especially when we're dealing with Velocity Banking too. So I brought Chris on today because I'm excited to hear how he tells the basic of infinite banking works, how it can serve you, and how it can really, really make you become your own bank. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. You're welcome, you're welcome. So tell us a little bit about how you got into the infinite banking, what it means, and how does it really help the basic individual in America, how can, how can this product or this process actually help people to become financially free? Sure. I, I think the easiest way for me to intro this is just to tell my story. I mean, I was a financial advisor for 16 years. And at the end of my advisory career, uh, I started doing real estate. My wealthiest clients were in real estate. So I just jumped on board. I said, if my wealthiest clients are doing well with real estate, I should start dabbling in it. So that's what we did. And in getting into real estate, it required me to borrow a lot of money. Well, it doesn't take long for a bank to start you know, not wanting to give you money. I mean, banks, maybe one, two, three deals. After that, they start just shying away. So I had to start finding additional sources of money. And I started going to private investors. Well, one of those private investors <clears throat> was this guy by the name of Mike. Mike was a really successful real estate investor out in Salt Lake City. He had a show on a and &E. I mean, he was, he was all... All of what he, you know, he, he was what people would want when you look at a real estate investor. But I was out there snowboarding because I used to be a pro snowboarder. So I was in Utah snowboarding. I had a deal. So I got a hold of Mike and I just said, hey, Mike, while I'm in Utah, do you think we can get together for lunch? I got a deal I want to show you. So we met at Cheesecake Factory, downtown Salt Lake. And I remember the conversation almost like it was yesterday. I just, I had asked Mike, you know, to borrow some money. It was about 165000 for a flip that we were doing. And then he's, you know, he was looking over the deal. He said, I'll review this. I'll underwrite it and I'll get back to you. But I just said to him, I just said, so Mike, how do you lend money on these deals? And Mike very quickly answered back. He said, well, I lend from my private bank. Now to me, I'm thinking, wait a second, do you have a bank? I'm thinking, Mike, dude, I knew you were wealthy, but I didn't think you had a bank. And if you got a bank, why are we at Cheesecake Factory? Let's go to your bank. So when I said that, I said, well, where is it? And he just says to me, so oh, no, I don't have a physical bank. I created a private banking system, which basically means I mimic what a bank does. And I said, okay, tell me more. He says, okay, so I take money that I would normally save at a traditional bank. And I changed where that money went. I put it into this account where I get paid guaranteed interest. Now I want to preface, remember I was a financial advisor. So as an advisor, I was 14 years in at that point. I thought I knew just about everything there was in the financial space. So when he said guaranteed interest, my mind immediately starts thinking of all the things that would be guaranteed interest. But then he goes on and he says, okay, outside of the guaranteed interest, and he also said the guaranteed interest is locked for his entire life. Like he gets the same interest rate for his entire life. And I'm thinking to myself, what the heck pays you a fixed interest rate for your entire life? I'm like, I, I don't know what that could be. So then he says, and I get dividends every year. I said, okay, so guaranteed interest plus dividends. And he says, and my dividends and interest grow tax-free. If I ever were to get sued, someone slips and falls on one of my properties, these assets are protected from judgments and liens. And I'm like, what in the world could this be? Because like, as he's saying these things, my mind is thinking, okay, tax-free Roth, uh, but it can't be a Roth because it's guaranteed but, and it's protected. And, and then he goes on and he says, and Chris, when you ask for money, just like everybody else that I lend money to, what I do is I take a loan from my bank and I give you that money. And I say, okay, just like a regular bank, you take a loan from your bank and you give me that money. He said, but... When I take that loan from my bank, my money does not stop earning compounding interest. And I didn't quite know what he meant. He's like, well, I put money in and every dollar I put in is earning interest and dividends compounding. But when I take the money out, remember I said, I'm taking a loan and I give it to you. My money never leaves the account, but you start paying me 15% interest on that money because that's what I used to pay him. And then I take the interest you give me and I put it back in my account. And that money is available the next day to lend to the next guy. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, guaranteed interest, dividends, tax-free, protected against judgments and liens, and you can use the money and not interrupt the compound. I'm like, Mike, what is this? And then he tells me what it is, which is not what the infinite banking concept is, but it was what he was doing that I just explained. He was using a private banking system, a machine, a vehicle, which we'll get into, taking money from it, just like he would any other bank, lending it to me taking the money from the loan and putting it back in. So he was just creating a continuous loop of his money. It was continuously going around and around this circle. But every time it, a new year turned, he was getting compounding plus dividends and his money just kept growing. 
So when you think about the infinite banking concept, like what is it? Well, the, the true definition of the infinite banking concept is it's a process of taking back the banking functions in your life. So think about the banking functions in all of our lives. I mean, <clears throat> what do we use banks for, right? We go out, we work for money, we make money, and we take that money, and what do we first do with it? Well, we put it into a traditional bank, in a checking account. Some of you put it into a savings account. Then from that bank, what do we do with our money in our checking account? Well, we take bits and pieces of it, and we pay our bills. We pay our mortgage, we pay our rent, or our, our groceries, and we pay our credit cards. And then we take a tiny little bit, if you know, it's usually never enough, and we save it. And sometimes we save that money in a separate account called a savings account. This is what the majority of people do. They make money, they spend money, and they save a little bit. And some people save in a 401k. So what is the infinite banking concept? Well, remember all that money I just told you that you were spending and all that money you were paying on your debts, like credit cards, car payments, mortgage payments. What if, just what if, those payments that you make for those things were paid back to yourself? So have you ever like thought about it, Christy? Have you ever added up? Well, you don't need to because I know you're already doing this, but like your audience, have they ever added up all of the checks that they write to their debts and added up how much money that is? Because I bet it's a lot. Yeah. If we did that, we added up our car payments, all of our credit card payments, even if they're minimum payments, our line of credit payments, any of the debts that we have out there, we're giving away thousands of dollars every single month. And a lot of the money we're giving away is mostly interest. Right. So we're bleeding interest. So remember I said the infinite banking concept is the process of taking back the banking functions in your life. Well, the banking functions are what I just described. Where you're saving money, that's a banking function. Where your money is going after that, that's a banking function. And when we wanna buy things, what do we do? We borrow from a bank, that's a banking function. So taking that back is exactly what this process is. Now, in saying that, I probably confused your audience. So now I'm gonna make it super simple. As long as we can understand that that's what we're doing is just taking back control, how does that actually work? Well, <clears throat> let me come over here to this board. First thing we must do is we must change one thing. Okay, so one change. And that is where our money, specifically, not all of our money, but where our savings goes first. So there's laws, there's laws to wealth. And one of the laws, the first law of wealth is to save 10% of your money. So if we can just assume 10%, so let's just say somebody is saving, I don't know, Christy, what number should I use for saving every month? People I deal with about $200 a month, Okay, so, so let's just say they're saving, because that's all I want to do is just talk about just the money they save, $200. Let's just say that $200 that they save, most people are probably using a bank account, right? Right. Let's just change where that money goes first. And let's take that $200 and put that into an account where it's going to give you all the things that I told you Mike said his private bank does. Guaranteed interest, dividends, tax-free growth, compounding interest, even if we use the money. Well, first thing we must understand is what kind of a vehicle, what kind of a machine could even give you all of that? Well, there's only one. There's only one thing in the financial universe that does that. And it happens to be a guaranteed account called a whole life insurance policy. But it's not just any whole life. That's where people get confused because you can't just go out to your Allstate agent or your state farm agent and just buy a, a life insurance product. It's gotta be specially designed and engineered. And I'm not gonna get into the specifics about the design and engineering, but <clears throat> we, that's what we do for our clients. We design and engineer them so that they work for what I'm gonna show. And the only reason we design and engineer is it's so that our clients get a lot of money that they save to use right away. And when I say right away, I mean immediately in the first 30 days. Because if anyone knows anything about a whole life insurance policy, it's first off, it's gotta be from a mutually owned company that pays dividends. Because remember, Mike said every, every year he gets a dividend. So you have to have a mutually owned company that pays dividends. But the other thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that it's designed so that whatever money we put in, if we put $200 in, we wanna make sure that every single month we have as much of that $200 as we, as much as possible that we can use. So let's just say we design it and, it, and you can use 80% of that $200, okay? So let's just use that number. So now we're saving. What are we saving money for? What would you say the majority of your clients are saving money for? The rainy day. A rainy day, but let's be more specific. What are they trying to do, most of them? Uh, buy a home, get ready for a down payment. Okay, <clears throat> so let's add that over here. They're trying to buy a home. Do any of your clients, are they trying to pay off debts? Yes. Okay, any of them maybe need a new car eventually? Yes. Okay, any of them want to invest some of that money? Yes. Okay, and do you think any of them might want to be private lenders on private money clubs someday? Uh, I would. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so let's just call all of these, I'm just gonna call all of these opportunities. 
Okay? And the reason I'm going to call these opportunities, and most people would be like, debt is not an opportunity. Debt is an opportunity because imagine if every payment you made to someone, one of your debts, that payment was made back to yourself. So now let's talk about the infinite banking concept. We changed where the $200 a month went. And now what we're doing is we're saving up so that we can do one of these things. So let's just say out of that $200 over time, and it might take a little bit of time. I mean, it's really just a component of how much you capitalize your banking system. But let's just say we build up $5,000 of cash value inside of our policy. So that's how much money we've saved up by saving $200 a month. Now let's just say over here, we have debts totaling $5,000. I'm just gonna use debts first, and then we're gonna go down the line. And let's say those $5,000 <clears> debts are costing you, I don't know, $200 a month in minimum payments. But also, as you teach your audience all the time using velocity banking, let's just say that was 20%. So the velocity of that would be you're giving away 20%, that money's leaving, but what if that 20% could come back? So let's just pretend instead of using a bank account, we're going to use this whole life. We're then going to take the money from the whole life, we'll just draw a circle, and we're going to take it as a loan. Remember I said Mike took loans. So why would we take it as a loan? A lot of people would be like, well, that doesn't make sense. When I take money from my bank account, I take a withdrawal, but we're going to take a loan. And the reason we're going to is because the insurance company made us two promises. One, a guaranteed interest rate. So I'll just write guaranteed interest. But the second thing they promised is a death benefit. So 200, let's just say this is a 500, I'm just making it up, a $500,000 debt benefit. And we want to take a loan of 5,000. So if we took a withdrawal, we would take the withdrawal from our $5,000 in cash value, which we don't want because then we would slow the, the compounding effect down. We would have no money compounding. But if we want to earn uninterrupted compounding, like that interest we're earning on the 5,000 without it affecting it, what we could do is we could borrow that 5,000 from the insurance company. And they would subtract that five grand from our death benefit. So if we died the next day, yes, our family would get $5,000 less, but we have that $5,000 available to us right now, which is always the most important thing. The insurance companies charge interest on that money, and it's about 5%. Five to, I'll put 5 to 6% depending on the carrier. 5 to 6% is a lot less than you can borrow from a bank right now. Would you agree? Okay. So we took the loan for $5,000. We pay off that debt. So the debt is gone. We no longer owe the $200 a month that we were giving to that debt. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that $200 and we're going to put it back into the place where it came, the whole life, which is also the same as taking back 20%, which is everything that you teach with velocity banking, you know, in, in a different way. But it's instead of doing a bank account, we're just doing a whole life. That's the only change we're doing here. By doing this, what we effectively have done using the infinite banking concept is we have made a spread just like a bank. Now, some people aren't really figuring this out, so let me just do the math. If your interest and dividends in your policy were 6%, which some of the carriers that we use, that's what it is, 6%, and the insurance company charged you five, how much money did you make? You're making six, they're charging five, you're making 1%, right? So that would be the spread, hypothetically, but the next year and the next year and the next year, since your money never stopped compounding, you're actually making a bigger spread every single year because you're earning interest on a higher amount of money, but you're still paying interest on the same amount. So over time, this spread goes up and you didn't have to do anything to make the spread go up. So that's one reason of using the whole life. The second reason is you're making money twice on the same dollar. So remember, we put $200 in and in a bank account, you'd be making interest on the bank account if your bank paid. But once you took the money out to, to buy a home, pay debts, car, invest, that money would stop earning interest. Here, remember, you never stopped earning interest. Yes, they charged you interest, but it was at a lower velocity or a lower interest rate than what they're paying you. So therefore, spread number one. So we'll call this spread one. But over here, if we were to do it again, 20% minus five means you made spread number two, if you wanted to figure it that way, which would be 15% because you take the 20 you were given the credit card minus the five that you had to pay the insurance company. So you effectively made money twice on the same dollar. You controlled all of the money because all the money ends up back into the same place where it started. So by doing this over and over, whether it's debts or cars, because cars work exactly the same way, you buy a car and that car was 5,000 bucks. Let's just say you could find a car for 5,000. That payment might be $300 a month. But if you bought the car using your policy instead of a bank account, we now have the car in the driveway. It's bought and paid for. But if we just made that same monthly payment, we would have paid the finance company of $300 a month we would then have an additional $300 going into our basket, our, our savings. So now all of a sudden we just keep layering it on all the while making a spread. So 
By doing this over and over, I don't care if it's a home, a car, investing, or making private loans, the infinite banking concept is allowing you to become the bank and allowing you to take back control of it because nowhere in this equation did we need a traditional bank. We became the bank. We made the spread instead of the bank making the spread because if you think about how a bank operates, you put money into a bank, the bank pays you interest. Let's just call it 4% if you found yourself a good bank. And then if you go back to that same bank to get a car loan, are they going to charge you less than 4% for that car loan? Absolutely not. No way. There's not a bank that would do that. If they're paying you 4 they're going to charge you at least 6 maybe 7% for the car loan. They make the spread. You don't. They give you the money with their terms, and they make the money on it. And they're making money twice because they're paying you 4 on your savings, but they're actually probably making 5 maybe 5 and a half. So you see how they're making money twice and you're not? The, the infinite banking concept just changes that, just puts you in control, allows you to determine the terms, and allows you to own and get all of the money that you're giving away. It just takes time. That is what makes the system so beautiful. This, this process of getting into your own bank, what it's done for me, and I just have the smaller policies that are set, you know, I think I have six or seven. But the thing is, <laughs> is that one, it provided any death benefit that I want to leave to my children. That was a complete um, release for me because I always wondered, you know, I had one life policy, it was going to run out by the time I'm in my late 50s. And I'm like, I, I have nothing for them. But with these uh, policies, it, it brings that piece. I also have the money in there in the event and when I want to take the loan out, that is very peaceful to me. So when I'm teaching people about financial freedom, I'm looking for them to have peace. And when I bring up infinite banking policies, it is just because it has an element of peace that you don't talk about a lot. Um, you talk about you know, how to get rid of debt, which is awesome. I love that. Uh, but the point also is that if people can move into these policies and figure out, you know, okay, when I pass away, this is going to happen. If I need the funds that's available for me, I can pull the funds to do investments like with the private money club. I mean, there's so many options. And the, the one big option that I personally use is I use my lines of credit to fund these policies. And now, that may be unethical. <laughs> I don't know. I'm using the bank against itself. But I'm also funding my bank and letting my income go in, expenses come out of my lines like I teach, works that right back down. And guess what? I'm ready to do another chunk, you know, in just a few months whenever the next one comes due. So to me, I don't know how you feel about that, but to me, it is just a peaceful process to be able to put money into the accounts while I'm secure. I mean, I'm growing money and I'm not even doing anything. And I also have my children provided for in the event that they need. And, you know, when, when I do pass. So for me, infinite banking policies are more than just let's figure out how we can invest and pay off debt or pay ourselves back. But it, it covers everything from your investing, although it's not an investment, but from growing the money to, you know, in the event when you do pass away, you're, you're covered. And I don't know. How do you feel about that? Uh, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you notice how very little I talked about the death benefit. But it is yes. ultimately very important, especially, I mean, I have a little one, you know, and I want to make sure if I leave this world too soon or, or on my, or whenever, you know, if I go right. on my time or too soon, I want to make sure that my family's in a better place when I'm not here. Um, so I, I love that. But let's hit one other thing. So you talked about, you know, how you use your, your home equity, we'll just call it a home equity line of credit. And right. instead of just going from home equity line to pay off debt or home equity line to buy a car, you take the money from the home equity put it into the policy and then send it out to go to work. And that, yes. I love that. I just, I didn't want to start there. So let's just talk about that. And we, we absolutely condone that. Uh, I don't know if the bank does, but I'm not here <laughs> working for the bank. So let's just say this person is doing $200 a month. Let's just say they've got $50,000 that they can get in their HELOC. So we already know they could take the money from their HELOC and they could use that direct over here to pay the debts. But when right. they do that, what they're basically doing is they're missing earning interest, the opportunity cost or the opportunity cost of not having the 50 grand earning interest. By taking it and putting that 500 or that, I'm sorry, that 50 into the whole life and then doing what I just showed, now you got $50,000 earning interest and dividends for the rest of your life. Right. And if it's built properly, which we, we only build these the right way, that 50,000 is now earning it tax-free. 
And you can still use that money. You still send it over here to do exactly what you teach with velocity right. blinking. You teach the recapture part of the, the money coming back. So let's just say now, if you did something like that and you had 300, now the only difference would be maybe some of the money that you recapture goes back to the HELOC and some of it goes back to the whole life. What some people will do in that is they'll have all the money go directly back to the HELOC. Skip paying the, the loan back to the insurance company because the insurance company, remember, they gave a loan against their death benefit. They don't care if you ever pay that loan back ever right. because they're going to get their money back when you die. They know that. They're subtracting the loan from the death benefit. So the loans never need to be paid back. So let's just say we took the, the monthly payments that you were recapturing. We sent them directly up here to pay the HELOC down, just like you teach. Now we're winning in the velocity game because a HELOC is simple interest, just like a policy loan is simple interest. So as we pay this down, now that money becomes available immediately. Next year, when you get your premium deposit, okay, you just take it from the, you could take it from the HELOC again, pay the premium deposit and pay the loan interest. So this becomes almost, uh, you know, I've heard it mentioned a one pot system where all the money starts from the HELOC and goes back to the HELOC. And then the HELOC just funds the, the banking system, right? And, and that's a great way to do it. So there's really no right or wrong way to do the infinite banking concept. There are just rules you must follow, which is why we do these together. Because velocity banking and the infinite banking concept, they're like peas in a pod because they, yes. they work together perfectly. All we're trying to do is, you know, for the whole process, we're trying to give your money a little extra horsepower. And that horsepower is uninterrupted compounding interest. And let me just hit one other question you had mentioned earlier, because it's an important one. When, you know, there's always objections when we talk to people and even when we talk to your clients. And one of the big ones is, you know, when they look at this system, they're like, yeah, but what if I can't save $200 one month? What if I lose my job? What if something unforeseen comes up in year two and I can't make that $200? No problem. When we build the policy, our team will ask. How much do you want to save? We're not going to tell you how much to save. We're always going to ask you, how much do you save now? And how much would you like to save into this policy? They tell us the amount. And then what we'll always ask them is, okay, how much would you like your floor to be, your minimum? So if 200 is the max, because it would be, if you set up a policy to hold $200, that's the most it's going to be able to hold. But the minimum would be anywhere between 60 and 90% less. So you could set up a plan for $100 or $200 and you could have the minimum if you wanted. It's tough to make them work at 90%, but you could have it be 90% less than the $200. So you could have flexibility to go $200 one month and then the next month, if we had to, we could reduce it down and then you could pop back up. You just can't change it in the first year. So when you set one of these policies up to run the infinite banking concept, the first year is gonna have to be exactly what you tell us. If it's 200, plan to make $200 a month deposits for 12 months or, or 2,400 for the entire year. So that's the minimum. I mean, in the, in, or that's the, uh, the min max on funding, but a lot of other people will say, yeah, but what's the minimum I can put into the policy? That's a, that's a whole nother topic. So if I'm going to erase this real quick, so I just want to show you the minimum. So when people ask us what the minimum is, cause they're like, oh, this seems like this is only for wealthy people or people that can save a ton of money, but that isn't the case at all. You see, this system, the infinite banking concept, works for just about anybody, but there, there is a minimum for how much. So it all starts with age. So Christy, how old are you? 52. 52. So when I'm looking at how much somebody like yourself would have to put into their policy for this to work for the infinite banking concept, here's all you do. You just add a zero after your age. And that really works out to be 10 times your age. And then you guys got to put a monthly. So for you to set up a policy, your bare minimum at 52 would be $520, so age 52. But let's just say you got a client that's 30. So it's simple, add a zero, and that's the minimum monthly. But again, that's the minimum monthly to set it up, but then we design it so this 300 could be reduced anywhere between 60 and 90% after the first year if they needed it. But this is just the flexibility, okay? Same thing for years. We could reduce your 520 down 60 to 90%, depending on how it's built, just so you have flexibility. So that's all people need to know. The minimum, 10 times your age, but that's for the first year. After that, we have flexibility of anywhere between 60 and 90% less. Okay, so that means after the first year, because that's a brand new to me, I never heard of this before. So if you're at the 520, are you saying you can increase it in the second year or decrease it? Great question. So when we build these policies, there are IRS rules, and I'm not gonna get specific, but they're called MEX7 pay. 
which basically means we have rules to follow with the IRS. If we want these policies to grow tax-free, we have to build them within the IRS rules. Now, again, I'm not gonna waste time today explaining that because this is something we need to know, not so much the clients. But what that would basically mean is if we set up a policy, well, I'll just do yours. We set up a policy at the minimum, 520 a month. But let's just say next year, you could save 1,000 a month. And you're like, hey, I wanna put $1,000 in. You can't because we built the policy right to the IRS limit. And what controls the IRS limit is clearly the death benefit. So essentially what we did to build your policies, we put the lowest death benefit on for the most amount of premium in. That's how we built it. And by doing that, we cannot go any higher than 520. So in that scenario, if you had an extra $500 a month that you wanted to save, you couldn't put it into the first policy. So just like any bank you've ever been into, there's no bank you've ever been into that only has one branch. I'd be willing to bet. They have multiple branch offices. Your banking system is just like a traditional bank. You will have multiple banking offices or not offices, but multiple banking policies. Right. Well, the next one might be the second policy or we like to call them second branch office. And now you're gonna put another 500 a month into that one. So now your total amount you'd be saving in this scenario would be 1,020. 520 into the first one, 500 into the second one. Now you've hit your goal. And again, you still have that flexibility. So how many do you have now? I have about seven on myself and my children. So you have seven policies. So yeah. I have, oh gosh, with Larissa's three, four. I have 15 in my banking system. So it's not a race to have the number of policies, but what, we're, what I'm trying to explain to your audience is you're going to start with one, but eventually as you make more money or have less debt to pay, you're going to be able to save more money. And that's when you're going to open a second policy, which is a second branch office and a third and a fourth. And, and eventually right. you'll be like Christy with seven, you know, and eventually you'll, you'll be like me with 15. And I'll always have more than 15 in the future because I'll do more policies on my daughter. I'll do more policies on my mom. Well, actually I can't anymore because she's uninsurable. I'll do more policies on my wife. So I'll keep adding to our family banking system. And the reason for that is as you have more capital to save, you want to continue to control that capital. So you just keep adding on to the banking system. And not only that, in adding on to your savings program, you're also increasing the death benefit. So should anyone in your family ever die, that money can come back. Like you've all probably heard of the Rockefellers. Why is it that each generation of Rockefellers is wealthier and wealthier and wealthier? That's why right. every Rockefeller family member has policies, whole life policies on them. And when they die, that money goes back to the family trust, funding the next generation of business growth and next generation, uh, their children and allows them to do more, be more and, and just control more really. Right. So um, I love, love, love what you say in one of your videos. You're talking about your daughter's policies. Mm -hmm. And when I heard you talking about that, I literally went out and got another policy for my 13, almost 14 year old, because you made that so simple of how you're putting in just a minimal amount on her right now at her young, young age and how much she's going to have available at 18 or 20, whatever it was. But I now have two policies on my youngest daughter because she is underage and I'm just funding those as full as I can do it until she gets of age anyway. Tell me a little bit about how did you even come up on that? that that's just genius. <laughs> well, actually, if I may, what I'd love to do is just show your audience my daughter's policy and kind of the plan for that. Would that be okay if I just share my yeah. screen and show that? That'd be great. All right. So this is just a spreadsheet, but this is my daughter's policy. It's not a big policy. So I set this up when my daughter was six or six months old. So Vivi is her name. When she when I built this policy, she was six months old. And here's what I did. As I said, mom and dad, me and my wife, we're going to fund Vivi's policy $5,000 a year. And the reason we're going to fund it is not for things we're going to buy today because at six months old or now she's three and a half. There's not really much she needs outside of some matchbox cars and toys. But in the future, Vivi's going to need college money. We all know how college works. Colleges are not nonprofits. They are very much profit companies and it's very expensive to go to school. And when we wanna send our kids to school, usually we save up for that or we take out student loans. Student loans are a major problem in this country. So I said, you know what? I don't wanna take student loans, but I want Vivi to be able to go to any school she wants to go. And how we're gonna do it is our family banking policy, her policy is gonna fund her school. So if we come down here, and I just want to kind of walk you through this, if we come down here to when she's 18 years old, now don't get hung up on the numbers because some of you are saying in 18 years from now, Chris, I'm sorry, school is going to be way more than $20,000. Just We could take way more than that, okay? But just assume it's $20,000. So Vivi goes to school. Each year, we take $20,000 from the policy in the form of a loan, and we pay for her school every year. So over the course of that schooling, we paid $80,000 out to the school, and it all came from her policy, which her policy, I just want to kind of show you here, 
the projected cash value and the net projected cash value. These numbers are the amount of money we have. So you can see when she goes to school, we had $99,000 saved in her policy to pay for her school. We didn't use 99,000 plus. Remember, even when we took $80,000 out of the policy, she's still earning interest and dividends on the full, oh, sorry, on the full 108 because the insurance company didn't take our money. They took their money, the debt benefit money, and lent that to us. So that's that's that. But that's not the end of Vivi's cycle, right? Eventually she's going to want to get probably want to get married. I hear weddings are pretty expensive. So we have basically got up to $155,000. And I have her getting married at 29. Look, if she gets married at 23, great. We've got 179,000 or 99 to pay for her wedding. But let's just say here the wedding's 40 grand. I take 40,000 out. So now we've taken loans of 120, but we have 275,000 earning interest and dividends while we've been using the money. Then she buys a house. So we then do a down payment on the house. Heck, she could probably buy the whole house, but let's just say she did a down payment. So we've taken 180 out, but we have 334 earning interest. Let's keep going. So eventually Vivi's going to have kids and Vivi's kids are going to go to school. So we take 30,000 out each year for her, Vivi's child. She has 895,000 earning uninterrupted compounding interest while we have 300,000 that we've taken out in loans. So you can see how fast this thing starts to grow. Now for you know Vivi, when she gets to the point of retirement and granted folks, whether or not Vivi uses it the way I'm showing you, this is just an example. She could do anything she wants. She could go buy a Porsche. She could buy a mansion. I mean, my gosh, she probably has enough money to buy a mansion in here. But here, I'm just going to show her using this money to supplement her retirement to the tune of $90,000 every year until she's age 90. And at 90, I just sort of, I stop it right there. She takes tax-free income out of this policy every year. So go back to the top and just think about what we just did. First thing we did is me and my wife decided to set up a stupid whole life policy, specially designed whole life for my daughter at six months old. We funded it at $5,000 every single year as long as we could. Okay, and, and eventually I'll teach Vivi how to use this policy. So Vivi will never go to a bank. And the funniest thing is, folks, my daughter will never, ever understand why her peers, why her friends do things the way they do with money. She'll literally think they're crazy. She'll be like, why would you ever borrow money from a bank and pay them interest when you could borrow money from your bank and pay yourself the same interest you're giving away, but you keep it all. So right. it's going to be a weird dynamic for her. But we yeah. use this little policy to fund her college, her, her wedding a down payment on her house, her kid's college, her retirement, and then here's the sum up. If we just take it to age 90 and we say, how much money was paid into this policy? 398,000 over the course of the entire policy. How many loans were taken out? $2.73 million was taken out of the policy. So she put 398 in, took 2.7 million out in loans. But how much money did she have in cash value earning interest? She had $5,578,858 earning interest and dividends at that point. Then how much did she have left after she took two seven out? Well, she had $2.9 million left. Whoops, she forgot to use some of it. And what was her net return on her money? 738.41% from a stupid whole life insurance policy. Folks, it isn't about the product, not at all. It's about the process. It's about the process of taking back the banking functions. When you don't leak, like if you were in a boat and you're, you got holes in your boat, it doesn't matter how fast you bail water out, you're gonna sink eventually. See, when your boat has no holes, then your boat will float forever. I'm just creating a system and I'm showing you how to do it. I did it for my daughter. I'm showing you how to create a system with no holes. You give no money away to anyone else's bank. All the money stays within your family. You control all the interest, you control all the terms. You 100% control all of your money. This example I just gave you is just one policy that I set up for my daughter and, and Christy, your, yours is exactly the same for your daughter. Um, and everybody could set it up. And, and listen, like I did 5,000. Someone could do any amount they want. They could do 1,000 bucks a year for a child. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to stop sharing. But I'm happy to give that, that sheet right there to any of your, uh, your audience. And I also have a, a full video I did. It, it's a little long. It's 90 minutes. But believe me, it's worth every second of it where it teaches this entire system for buying cars, paying off debt, using it. And, you know, your, your audience definitely, definitely should watch it. I just think that's crazy. And while you were talking, you were teaching me because I literally thought that they that the premiums came off. I didn't realize that all of the money that you actually deposit is growing at that compound interest. Oh, sure. I yeah. thought that once they apply the principal, I mean the premiums, that you know you're just getting the leftovers. Nope, that's the, the whole idea. Crazy. Yeah, you're always earning interest and dividends. If and, and listen, folks, I want to also be very clear. 
Not every whole life works this way. If you just go to your insurance person, you buy a whole life from them, I promise you it won't look anything like what I'm showing you and it won't work anything like what we're talking about. These are designed to do this. Contractually, we literally designed the policy backwards from a regular whole life so that it works like this. So it has high early cash value. And the other thing too, what you just referenced, and I don't want to get technical, but there's two types of, of insurance companies. There's direct and non-direct recognition companies. Everything I just talked about is a non-direct recognition. What that means is when you take a loan from the companies we use, they don't recognize the loan, meaning your money, all of your money, is earning interest and dividends, compounded. If it's a direct recognition company, what they do is they take your total cash value, subtract the loans, and pay you dividends and interest on the remaining amount. So you can see where that'd be a big difference, right? So in, in Vivi's case, where I did that, and let me just show this again real quick to your audience just because it's easier to look at numbers. In Vivi's case, just imagine this. Let's come down here. If this was your daughter, would you want your daughter earning interest and dividends on 5.5 million, or would you want them earning dividends and interest on 2.9 million? I think you know the answer, right? 5.5. So how could you earn interest on 5.5 when you already took 2.7 out? Well, you get an insurance company, a non-direct recognition insurance company that doesn't recognize the loan. So they literally don't look at any of these loans that were taken out. They're just like, hey, we're just giving you some of your debt benefit. We're going to charge you interest, so we're going to make money on the interest. But hey, we're going to pay you interest on the full amount because really the full amount is still in your account. We just used it to collateralize that $2.7 million in loans. So if you die, we get our $2.7 million back and we just subtract it from this $4 million death benefit. So the other thing too I didn't talk about there, but death benefit. Let's just hit that real quick with Vivi since we're looking at numbers. Vivi's policy started with a $1,073,000 death benefit. Let's just fast forward. And this is assuming she took all that money out and never paid any of that money back. So by the time she's 46, that million dollar death benefit is now 2.9. And as the, you know, when she gets down to 90, that same death benefit has gone from a million to $4 million. I'm not gonna explain how that happens, but the dollars that were, the way we design these, a lot of the money that we're saving in these policies is not going to what they call the base or the death benefit. It is going to a special rider. And every dollar that goes into that rider has to increase the death benefit. Literally, it, it's, it's, a, it's a law, not only but a law, but it's a rule. Like the insurance company can never allow you to have more cash value than you do death benefit. So in other words, as your cash value has gone up, like right here, the second you breached uh, age 52, she was at a million 52. If her death benefit never went up, she would have more cash value than death benefit. That, that You can't do that. So the death benefit right. at that point, when she had a million, had to be three million. So you see every dollar that increases in the cash value has to increase the death benefit. And it's not a pro rata amount, but it's a calculation the insurance company does. So you can never ever have more cash value than you do death benefit. And you will never have, you will never in the cash value, you can't lose money in these. So you'll never have money, less money next year than you did this year. And you'll never have less debt benefit than you did the year prior. It always goes up. And it is literally nothing that I'm smart about. It is mathematics. It's right. compounding interest. That's all it is. And that's, I think, right. what a lot of people do is they overcomplicate this. They try to make this so complicated. This is so simple. It's just money and time with interest. That's it. Money compounding over time. That's all this is. And then a death benefit because that's what insurance companies do. Well, I just mailed in another check to you guys, to the insurance company for mine. I'm so excited to do it. And I, like I said, it offers peace for me in so many ways that to me, it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. But I realize people out there just haven't heard about this or they don't understand it. So that's why I wanted to bring you on today is to let people know that, yes, Velocity Banking is the most game changing thing I've ever done in my life. But infinite banking, like you said, it's right beside of it because I've not just got my debt cleared, but I've also provided for my children and their future. And to me, that is completely peaceful. I've really dealt with that for years because I wondered, well, how am I going to do this? Or how am I going to retire? Or I don't know, have anything to give. And it's like all of this just worked out on its own through the infinite policies. So another thing I want to say to people, uh, when I came to your group to get my policies, the first one that I got literally was completed and ready for me to do deposits just a little over two weeks. So this isn't a process that always takes a long time, uh, not for me anyway. Then when I decided to pick up the policy on my daughter, 
it was so easy it wasn't funny because she's underage so it's just a basic medical questionnaire uh, she was in i'm pretty sure in two weeks and then when i picked up another one for myself because it was with i think within a eight month range uh, the medical was so easy again they didn't even go through everything so once you're in it may take you a minute to get in you know because you do have to answer the medical questions uh, they are going to do an exam and it's it's seems tedious at first but once you're in and you start rolling and you see what your money is doing and how it's growing and and the piece that comes with that guys everybody needs these infinite policies uh, i'm always preaching get away from the banks let's let's change up how we're using the banks so we can save interest this right here is it's just wonderful in every way it can help with your debt but it can help with your children's lives when you're no longer here to help them. So that offers me peace. I hope that you guys uh, understand what he's saying. He, he put it in such elementary terms today that I actually learned things I didn't know that make me excited when it's time to make those annual deposits that I do. Um, and I do them again through my HELOC. So that's something to think about. And $5,000 a year for his child Mine seven thousand a year. So, what is that? A cup of coffee a day? I mean, that's not even any money. So, I just hope that you guys think about this. I'm going to have a link right below this video in the description. It's going to give you uh, his information, how to reach out to his team, so that you too can begin the process here. Um, I know that when you go through his link, you're going to come up to a 90 minute video, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. right? And they're going to watch that and it'll go into even deeper detail about what you guys offer. Absolutely. Yeah, the 90 minute video is key. I mean, what we went over today is like, you know, the pimple on the elephant's butt. You know, I just touched the surface, but the 90 minute video goes deep into it so that they really will understand the concept, the process how it all works and two case studies, one paying debt down and one buying cars. Because I mean, listen, like if you apply what we just showed you, just the kind of surface level, you will know how to buy cars and get all the money back for every single car you buy, drive and own. It's very simple wow. and that will happen every single car you buy. And the other thing I always like about what you do is velocity banking is so needed for our clients too, which is why we're gonna do a video for my clients on how you can help them. Because a lot of people come to us before they're ready for the infant banking concept because they're literally living paycheck to paycheck. And we can't help somebody that can't save money. Because remember I said, the minimum is 10 times your age, you gotta save. If you can't do that, velocity banking is the best option to get people to the point where they can actually save money. Because if they're living paycheck to paycheck, you're just giving it all away to the other banks. So velocity banking allows you to use that to get that point to that point where you can save. And then the infinite banking concept, I always like to think of things as bolt-ons. It's just a bolt-on to the velocity banking. Or right. for you, IBC is just a bolt on to you know what you're doing. So each one of them just bolts on to one another and works perfectly. And the last thing I'll say <clears throat> is, you know, I know a lot of people when, when they see what we do, they're like, oh my God, that would take so much time. I don't know how to do this. That's perfect. Our team not only helps you get started, but our team also implements what we call the maps. Okay. So we will create whatever map you want. You want to buy cars, you want to buy a house, you want to invest, you want to pay off debt. We have tools we've created, software we've created that allows us to literally show you what it will look like mathematically for your situation. And then we don't just give you your policy and then pat you on the button and say, all right, good luck, see you next time. No, 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 right. we actually hold your hand. We work with you, our team, what's called the I team, the implementation team, works with you every quarter to make sure that you're staying on track, make sure that you're using the infinite banking concepts the proper way, and make sure that your problems are being solved. So I don't know how else to, to make it easier for people than just saying, hey, we'll help you do it and we'll hold your hand through the whole thing. Because listen, I, I sometimes wonder, you know, like if today's generations would know how to get in their car and drive across the country and actually get to a destination if they didn't have GPS. Like we used to do, remember we used to do that with maps, with atlases, right. like I know how to get anywhere with a map. To, I don't know if kids today would know how to do that, but that's fine that. because they have GPSs where they just put the coordinates in. What my team does is literally just allows you to put the coordinates in. What do you want? What goal are we solving? And then our GP, our team, like our is like your GPS, we'll just guide you there. And that's as simple as it can get. Right. Yes. And that is exactly what your team does for me is I get emails every so often. And they said, hey, you know, are you ready to do this? Or, you know, what do you want to do with this? So they're constantly throwing me reminders, even though I haven't taken a lot of time to work some things out here. But wow, it's just like a constant reminder that I have somebody ready to take action when I'm ready to jump in. And I think that's awesome. I also get texts from them. So, yeah, we I mean, email, we call, and we text. And if you don't answer any of them, well, you know, the fault's on you there. <laughs>
<laughs> I know, I know, and I, I'm one, I'm one to do that. But guys, I told you, this man right here is a genius. He is the smartest man I probably know. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the videos. Uh, me, he and I both will check the video questions to see you know, how we can help move you forward if you're interested. Like I said, the link is below. So definitely go through that to get more information regarding these policies and how you can get set up. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on today. Uh, you're always such a pleasure, I swear. I'm not kidding when I say you're a genius. And the way you, you bring this out in such elementary terms for an 80s child like myself, is just, it's simple. I mean, you make it clear. I know exactly what to do, how to do it, and what it's going to do for me when I get set up. So thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to serve your clients. You are welcome anytime. And for you guys out there, like I said, go to the link, check it out. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Also, be looking for other videos because I asked Chris that we would go on and we would make some more of these detailed videos for you guys so that you understand exactly what these policies do because they are deep and it does take a minute to understand how it's going to help you. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.